Hey everybody, I'm Chris Kiefer with racerxonline.com and guess what? We're at A2 and we're wandering the pits on a Friday. Deep, deep in the pits. You're gonna find a lot of sprinter vans, um, some cars with trailers, just putting up the tents right now. So Friday is a setup day for the Supercross race that's on Saturday, but we get to walk around and talk to the riders. So I wanna do something a little bit different. We went around and saw a lot of factory bikes, right? But what about the real world? What about the other side? The other side that a lot of you don't see. So we walked around today and talked to some privateers and to get their stories and how they got here and what their backstories is on their motorcycles, how they pay their way to get here and everything in between. So we picked a few. There's only a few that we got today, but there's a lot of these guys out here. So if you're at a Supercross race, say Anaheim, or we're going East Coast here pretty soon, venture to the back of the side of the pits and really get to know some of these guys because they are the backbone of our sport. And chances are they're way more entertaining than the factory guys. There's a few entertaining factory riders, but for the most part, each one of these guys are very friendly and willing to talk to you, the fan. So uh, stay tuned. We have a couple of interviews that I think you guys will enjoy. Some a little bit different. You guys have been seeing the bikes of Supercross, all these factory bikes. We drool over them. We want to know all about them. But you know what? This is real life right here. I got Alex Nagy, 509. He's a privateer. He's been around the circuit for a very long time. And the reason why I wanted to do this, a couple reasons. So last week I got a text message from Alex Ray saying that Alex was having a little bit of a struggle with passing sound at AMA in San Diego. And then he showed me a picture of what he did to his mufflers to pass sound. So we'll get a close up shot of that. So that led me to, you know what? I'm gonna try to help this guy and uh, get him a set of mufflers. And then I was watching the Supercross on TV and then I see Mr. 509 right next to Chase Sexton and he had a high front end, Chase's dragster all set down and I go, he doesn't have a whole shot device. So we brought him some parts, but I also wanted to give you guys a little bit of backstory of what it's like to be a privateer, not just the factory rigs, like, you know, shiny new things. Uh, Alex lives out of his van. I texted him last night, hey, you at Anaheim? And he goes, yep, I'm already here. I go, where are you at? He's like, I'm in my van sleeping. So, Alex, bring it in here. How long have you been doing this, and why do you keep doing this to yourself? Uh, simply just because I, I love riding, I love racing, and uh, I've been doing it my whole life, and there's really nothing else I'd rather do. So uh, I do it any way I can, and uh, it just is what it is. So, all right, we're working on a 2020 Honda CRF 450R. You know, Honda did uh, repurpose some of these bikes, call them an RS. So give us the backstory on how you got this bike and where it came from. Yeah, so uh, this bike actually came from uh, one of the owners of Skivvy, uh, Jeff. Um, originally, it was uh, one of the old FXR Chaparral Honda bikes from Michael Lindsay's old race team. And uh, so Jeff got the bike and uh, said he had a bike for me to ride. And uh, here we are now. So when Alex got this bike, there may or may, not, may or may not have been some problems with this thing. It looks like it may have sucked some dirt, but we kept on trucking. Uh, we have a Denon radiator, we kept on trucking. His wheels are off right now, getting some fresh rubber, but we are keep trucking. Um, look it, it's not perfect. Mufflers are used and old. Doesn't have a whole shot device, but we keep racing because we love it. So Alex, how long do you want to keep doing this? And I guess for the people out there, you're not asking for money. You're not on GoFundMe and say, hey, can you help me out? You're just doing it on your own for the love of the sport. So how much longer are we going to keep up this? You're 26. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of treat every year like it's my last. And uh, I've always said I'm going to do it as long as I can, as long as it makes sense to. But uh, each year it gets harder and harder. Uh, this year was a little bit on the rocks. But last minute I was able to uh, pull it together and make it happen. And uh, as long as I'm still able to qualify, make night shows, be competitive, try and get in mains, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long it lasts. Him and his girlfriend travel around the United States in this van. I met him at St. Louis, first time I ever met him, and he, him and his woman are just sitting in the back of the van. I go, are you the lovely lady that graces him throughout the whole United States? And she goes, yes, I am. So you're still with her, and she's still with you, and it doesn't matter, you're not in a rig, but she's not your average Supercross wife. You know, she sticks with them. You know, privateers need love too. She's right there for you. Yeah, we've been together for a while, almost like eight or nine years now, and uh, she definitely toughs it out with me, comes to as many races as she can, but she works a real job, so uh, can't get out as much as I'd like her to be able to, but uh, good to have her with me and, and uh, coming along for the ride. So Kellen will get a close-up shot. We have a tool, not a tool chest, not a toolbox. We have a tool bag, a backpack. The zipper's gone, blown out. 
we have some MR Pro 6, which is expensive fuel, but you know what? No, it's premium. Premium? It's pre oh, premium in an MR Pro 6 can. So. Smoke and mirrors. Yep, all show. 91 with some pop tarts, like cardboard over the gas cap because it's leaking. It's been raining in Southern California. So look it, this is real life. You want to know about real life? This is it right here. You were on steel frame bikes before. Now you're on this bike. Give the Honda people out there what they want to know. All right. What is so special about this bike versus your old bikes? Uh, I got to say it's fast for sure. Um, that's probably my, my biggest thing I noticed with this bike. And then um, that mixed with some uh, good race tech suspension by 812. And uh, I got a bike that's competitive, so I can't complain. All right. Last thing. Who do you like to think? Like there's people out there keeping you on on the road. Obviously you're doing this. He makes his money by racing. That's how he gets to race to race. But there are some people that help you, so uh, shout them out. Uh, I got to give my friend uh, Jake Scott a big thanks because uh, I've been staying at his house as much as I can while I'm out here up in Yukaipa. So without him kind of having a home base, it would be real hard to do this. And then uh, Rob, everyone at Race Tech, 812, Doc, and um, along with the whole Skivvy team, Colin Morrison, uh, Brad at FXR, Topples Tree Service, um, Pirelli always hooking it up with tires and everything. And along with everyone else, I, I couldn't do it without all the help from everyone. So if you see some of these three digit guys here at a Supercross, cheer for them, root for them. They're doing all of this out of their own pocket and they all have a special story just like Alex. So uh, stay tuned, we're gonna visit some more here pretty soon. Okay, this man needs no introduction, but we're gonna give one anyway. Logan Carr now. Look at you started something last year that blew up and now a lot of other privateers out there are following your footsteps, man. So we have only fans on board this year, which is for me, if you guys know me, this is awesome. Logan's my hero. Besides Nagy, we're a step up from Nagy right now. But how did you create all of this? Is this something that you laid in bed one night and said, you know what, I'm gonna try to go for it and go to outside the box and go to different companies? Coming into this year, yes. Coming into last year, no, I was riding for this dude, screwed me over, and then kind of just things just kind of fell in my lap. I had that Hannah Ray girl, Hannah Ray girl reach out to me. Uh, kind of started a whole thing. She uh, she saw a huge upside to, to sponsoring me and it made my social media blow up. It made her social media blow up and kind of just went from there and, you know, had a, had a fun summer, bought a boat, had a good time all summer. And then once I started building my program, I was like, well, I mean, I kind of did a lot for OnlyFans. I feel like in the sport, like a lot of people know OnlyFans. I mean, they already knew OnlyFans, I'm sure. But like I was kind of known as the as the OnlyFans guy. So I reached out to like the corporate company of OnlyFans and they were all for it. Like and literally had a contract in front of me two weeks later and it's unbelievable like it's i'm pretty fortunate to have the support i do from them it's funny because all of us that race dirt bikes and you know this we think making it would be under a rig right but for me making it is getting to ride or race your dirt bike have some money in your bank account and getting to do what you love to do mm -hmm. and i feel like that's kind of how you work definitely like I'm, I'm at the point in my career like i'm not going to get a factory ride like i know that and I mean, realistically, I, I, I was approached by a lot of like satellite privateer teams, but like, I'm not gonna do that because I mean, realistically, they're gonna um, give give us bikes, pay for our entries fees, and maybe travel expenses. Like, I can do that, and then, you know, a lot more than that. I'm, I'm doing my own program, so and I can run whatever I want. And like, somebody walks through the pits, like it looks like I'm lower than like say somebody on like a satellite team, but it's it's not true at all. Smoke and mirrors. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, if what do you consider a privateer? I'm going to ask some of these guys around here, but so for me, I feel like you're on the upper echelon of what a privateer is. Look, you're getting some money. You've created a brand for yourself. You're actually, you know, on the green side of things in your bank account versus the red, like Nagy over there. Like he's spending every single dime living in his van, but you bought a boat, you're racing your dirt bike, you know, you're not hurting, but yet it's coming out of your own pocket. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough question. Like, would you consider like, Mike Genova's team, a privateer team? Like, Absolutely not. I, I don't either, but I mean, I know a lot of people think just because they don't have like OEM factory support, they're not a uh, privateer, but I, I, I disagree with that. I, I think if you're riding for Mitch, uh, Mike Genova's team, I think 100% you're a factory rider. I mean, those bikes are those bikes are good, obviously, then they can win, so. Um, you picked the KX450, obviously have great contingency for Supercross. Uh, what's done to your bike here? People might think, oh, you got all this stuff done, but according to you, it's just stock with the muffler and a few bits. Yeah, that's literally it. Just just the aftermarket parts that you see, the motor is literally box stock. It's probably got like 50 hours on it. Probably needs a rebuild. I need to start riding my other bike in there. But yeah, just exhaust. I run uh, Pro 6 VP and that's literally it. Like 
performance parts wise. Did you ever get to ride another bike or just it's been Cowie the whole time? Did you ever get experience, you know, different bikes on the off season? Um, I mean, yeah, I rode a lot of my buddies bikes, but realis realistically at the end of the day, like you can make a lot more money riding a Kawasaki and I have a bunch of extra parts and stuff like that already. And I have a dealership back home that, that gave me one bike and yeah, just kind of stick with green for now. Okay. Logan Carnow. Last thing I want to say to you, has anybody ever said you kind of look like Jason Anderson when you ride a dirt bike? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm kind of loose and oh, the un untucked jersey helps too with, but yeah. I just think the way that you ride on the rear of the bike a little bit, how you yeah, jump yeah. and things, you guys look similar. That's a compliment because I think that dude rides awesome. Logan Carr now. Hit him up. He'll be in the pits. <laughs> say hi. Lots of cool things happen in the pits too, right? Dude, it gets rowdy. A1 was, A1 was crazy. <laughs> Hopefully A2 is crazy too. <laughs> Logan Carr now. Okay, so Josh Greco 976 actually has a pretty cool setup, like full tent. A small little van to get around in, a mustache that he could probably ride on if he wants to. If his bike breaks, he's got his mustache. He can, you know, get on those things. Those handle. What bend is that? Uh, this is the the Phoenix handlebar bend. Okay. Phoenix handlebar bend. All right. So, you've been doing this for a while, dude. Uh, high des. You were high des for a little bit. Right now. now you're back east. Just got engaged. It's like a, he's all grown up now. How old are you? I just turned 30. So 30 years old, still making that privateer journey. Actually. This year, man, I've been noticing you've been riding a lot better than you have in the past. So what does that attribute to? Uh, the last couple months, November, December, I was at South of the Border training facility. Um, the last probably five years, I really didn't get preseason practicing in. So I would uh, definitely give it to that. My sponsors for helping me get out there and getting a little bit of practice time this year. How long are we going to do this for? So you've been at this for quite a long time. You're 30 years old. I'm talking to a lot of privateers and the dream is, you know, just to keep doing what you do and make a little bit of money. You get to do what you love. Is that kind of where we're at right now? Oh, yeah. Every year is about building. Uh, we're getting more and more professional each year with setup sponsor wise, uh, more stuff on the bike and everything. And I'm still having as much fun as ever doing it. So we're going to do it as long as we still can. OK, so why do you choose this bike? A lot of privateers can, you know, buy their bikes and get whatever they want. Do you have a shop? This is what you have, or do you have a choice, or what's the reason? I actually like the Austrian bike a lot. I like the steel frame. Um, last year, I rode a Cowie for a contingency, and uh, it actually paid for my gas gas. But uh, I prefer the KTM over all of them, but being on a budget, we went with the gas gas this year, and the red frame's a plus. So do you know about my home life theory? What's your home life theory? So Steve Mathis says that, you know, you don't need to have a great home life to be fast on a dirt bike, but I feel like your life has been stable with your chick. Sorry, what's her name? Nicole. Nicole, uh, your basement, I feel like. You know what the basement husband thing is? Yes. I feel like he's part of the basement husband's club. But how do you feel like having a stable home life and then bringing this into racing, has that helped you as well? Oh, yeah. The happier I am at home, the happier I am on my bike. Uh, used to be the bike to get away from everything and now it's just uh, everything in a good mood and keep it rolling uh, so this is the only job you got how do you subsidize all of this are you making money are you spending all of your money to do this where are we at on the money budget deal uh, we have a lot of sponsors that help uh, financially here and there um, that that gets us entry fees fuel money etc but uh, as long as I'm qualifying for night shows I profit on the night um, I live as minimalistic as possible, drive the tiny van, save money, no hotels, nothing like that, no eating at fancy places. And then uh, during off season, we do a lot of fair racing and I actually have a few of my own uh, uh, like printing business. I print small stickers for like cell phones and uh, stuff like that. I have a 3D printer. I do croc number plate gibbets and uh, um, I have a laser engraver too. So I have a little couple side hustles. So what is that side hustle? How can people reach out to you and hopefully you can make some money off of that? Um, I pretty much just run it off my social media. So uh, I got an uh, Instagram page. It's uh, one uh, spelled out, seven the number, and then six spelled out brand, 176 brand on Instagram. Um, or even just hit me up on my personal Instagram, Greco976, and uh, let me know what you want. And we just kind of make it whenever we're at home and can. All right, last, who do you want to thank? Who gets you here and uh, rip off those sponsors for us? 
Yeah, definitely. This year, Sean and Jamie Mahoney, the Mahoney family, stepped up huge. They actually purchased this 250 for me and, and the motor. Um, so they're the title sponsor the next two years. Um, they're good family friends that have just helped out the last couple, and this year stepped up majorly. Uh, next, we have MX for Christ. They've been on board for two years. Um, then we have Estate Jewelers out of Toledo, Ohio. They actually were the ones that helped me get the engagement ring for Nicole, way out of my budget. How much was that? Uh, I, I could have bought a dirt bike. Thank you. Women, you want rings, we want dirt bikes. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm extremely pleased with what they did. Uh, they worked with me really well, and uh, Nicole wasn't expecting it. We've been talking about marriage and really weren't going to do an engagement, but Estate uh, Jewelers this year helped me step up to that point and... If we could we could throw a picture up of Nicole right now. It'd be awesome because then you would really see what I'm talking about when we're talking about batting above your average. Because oh, yeah. I mean, you're you're a decent looking man, but I feel like Nicole is beautiful. Oh, she's amazing. Way out of my league. Uh, the mustache is what did it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just got blinded by everything else. So uh, who who else we got here? What, who else is helping you? Uh, Phoenix Handlebars, SKDA. We're doing new graphics each week, and I actually got to do those today. Um, Pro Moto Billet, Fastway with my foot pegs, Recluse Clutch, Moto Seat, No Toil, Arma Energy, Skivvy, LS2 Helmets, um, Cometic Gastic, Gaskets, Asterix, JE Pistons, FMF Pipe, Risk Racing Moto with the stands and pads, um, Pure Adrenaline and all custom gear this year, Evans Coolant and all my bikes, um, Grand Bro with the suspension, I've ran them for probably 12 years now which i actually pay for suspension so i trust my life with this stuff i won't go anywhere else um misfit riders country financial um we got a bunch of people on board i got to look at the canopy and stuff uh kim and dave's toy barn cp and l contractors uh we pretty much sell space wherever we can whether it's individually on the canopy on the posters on the bike on the jersey just i sell each spot individually so um i have a ton of people behind me that help kind of all year long and then uh the fans and everyone that support when we go to seattle and stuff and it's a long trip someone will kick down 50 bucks 20 bucks 200 bucks and helps us get there so uh really everyone standing behind us really helps all year long privateers the best people in the pits i know factory riders are the thing you guys want posters you want to talk to them but if you guys can walk around the pits a little bit and see some of these guys that are in the back, I think you can uh, relate to those guys a lot more than you can the factory riders. We talked about the privateer situation. Is he a privateer or isn't he? I'll let you make that choice here, Alex Ray. Are you a privateer or not? Are you making money, yes or no? Uh, I mean, I'm making a little bit of money, yes, but not anything near what I would say any of the other factory guys are making. So I would say I'm a privateer because this is a stock motorcycle. Can we settle the debate right now? Who were you first? Were you pulp or were you swap moto? Uh, I've always, mm -hmm. I've yep, always, yep. I've always been a little bit of both. Uh, nope. think, Can't, don't be JT and Waffle. Who were you first? I was pulp first. Oh. I was pulp first, yeah. Okay, so there we have it. Pulp MX's Alex Ray. Sorry, Don. Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, so a little bit about your bike. You're one of the, I, I think the only one besides Benny that's on a new 2023 YZ450 because it was hard to get. Yamaha for whatever reason likes Alex Ray. I have no idea. I mean, we've had a bike stolen. Yes or no? Yes. You get that back? No, we never got it back. No, it's, it's in Mexico somewhere. But some of the people that were there at the time are not there now. So maybe you got to refresh. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I, I ended up having to pay for the bike that got stolen. So I mean, I oh, feel like, did. yeah, yeah, no, I paid for it. I didn't pay for the suspension that got stolen with it, but. Ouch. All right. The money. <laughs> um, I ride the crap out of my YZ450. We debate all the time on group text with Steve. You guys say this is the bike of the year. I'm a little bit reluctant to call it that, but... What, what bike, do, even with your reluctant list, what do you put before it? Reluctantness. I don't, I don't know what... KX450 is really good. Yeah, for five hours. Team Green Bucks here? Good. Kawasaki pays the most. Yeah, well, pay for... Uh, use that money to freaking buy parts, because you're going to need seat bolts. You're going to need freaking... You need seat bolts right now. You're going to need uh, pipe mounts for your subframe. You're going to need all kinds of stuff. All right. Let's talk about your bike. Okay. This is not going to be a debate between... I feel like we're in the car with JT and Steve right now. <laughs> so, uh, stock motorcycle. We all know that you're very hard on clutches. Uh, we have a Henson basket. But besides that, what's going on with your dirt bike? We still don't have a Henson basket. We just got plates. No basket? No basket yet. 
Okay. Yeah. So I think you're doing the testing on that. Uh, so pretty much all we have, we have a set of W wheels. Um, you know, John over there, he just, you know, he wanted to lace me up with some good wheels. I think Don Maeda uh, helped me out with that. Um, we have uh, <laughs> we have a Yoshimura pipe, full ex uh, full system header and you know the back part. Uh, let's see what else. It's called a muffler. Whatever. And uh, we have a, a gripper guts guts racing seat and some Enzo suspension. And some pegs. Uh, yeah. So we have some Raptor foot pegs and then a flow front brake lever. I will say this. I love A Ray. I feel like couple things he's riding better than I've seen him ride in a long time obviously his wrist is fixed last year if you know a Ray had a wrist problem when he was warming up his wrist on the starting line you knew it was gonna be a bad day for you fantasy people he hasn't done that in this year so please for the love of God if you're down there in the nighttime show don't warm up your hands because people are gonna freak out on you did a little bit last week uh, just because it was so cold um, yeah it was it was chilly last week you weren't there were you daytime program or? i was a uh, home program oh yeah he was home he just he couldn't handle it but um what's the best thing about this yamaha uh best thing about the yamaha is just uh how nimble it is you know they really like eli said in in like a i don't know he said in a podcast or something they they uh, went the bike went on a diet it got lighter uh it's more nimble you can you're able to cut down in the corners a lot better uh it's skinnier uh the power it's it has a longer uh, like I said, I'm running a 1350, so help last. Uh, <laughs> you did the Jody one tooth up. Got he's, the so, he's so fam uh, he's so famous that he's just forgetting about the camera people now. Okay. A Ray. Hey no, hey last week in the whoops, you know, long set of whoops came off that double, just carried my momentum. I hit the whoops all night in second gear. That's how long these uh, these bikes pull. Yeah, uh, it is a great bike. Are we on uh, a stock ECU map? All zeros? Are we chizzing? Yeah, I had, dude, I pressed the button on my practice bike the other day. It started blinking all kinds of weird shit. I, I was asking the Yamaha guys, I'm like, how do I get this thing to stop blinking? I don't know what I did to it. I don't mess with it. Um, my mechanic, Mike, over here from Checkmate MX, uh, he's trying to get me to uh, test some different maps today. So uh, we'll see it press. But yeah, I've been, for the most part, I've been stuck. And then, oh yeah, I mean, we run some ETS race fuel. Uh, MX-18 or MX-21? Uh, 18. 18. Not the real stinky stuff, but like the, the lower end. I think that's all I need on this 450, and it really brings the bike alive. All right. So I feel like A-Ray's uh, newfound speed and consistency, if you can call it that, you know, he stays on the bike fairly well so far. Sam is to be credited for all of this. The bike, whatever, but he's getting married. I feel like that has helped him the past year or so. Um, yeah, no, so we're going to look for some more consistency here at A2 and, uh, last but not least rip off a few and don't have to sit here for five minutes. Um, give us your, your top sponsors that are helping you get here. I mean, of course, uh, Yamaha who's supplied me with the best bike on the market. It's the bike of the year. O'Neill, Swap Moto Live, uh, Maxxis. Uh, those are the three big keys. Uh, Checkmate, MX, you know, they, my mechanic Mike is freaking awesome. Uh, Pro Taper, Backyard Designs is doing these graphics. Yeah, man, it's, uh, oh yeah, Jeremy Treadwell. Uh, he was he was a part of the the program that I was on the past couple years. And, uh, you know, he's he was always a good dude. Uh, one of the, probably one of the only ones who, who sort of stuck around from that program. But uh, but yeah, he's, he stepped up, helped me out this year, and Enzo Racing. You know, he, he, uh, he got me comfortable. You know, Ross, you know, being Don's brother, you know, that's sort of grandfather. Package deal. deal. Yep, yep. And then W Wheels. You know, those guys, I have a, I have a great bike. It's a great motorcycle. All right, look for number 140, possibly a two-digit in 24, but he's going to be retired. So <laughs> see you later. We found the number 80, Kevin Morans. We're going to talk a little about his program. His is a little unique. Actually, we talked to a few of these guys that are trying to make money, going racing. Kevin is one of those guys that have been doing it quite a bit. So... Um, talk about your program, how it's set up, and how you make money per round. Alrighty, you want to just take yeah, this? Just I, take got, I, got, I got a little bit. Okay, so we have a lot of different things going on with the program. The biggest thing that um, I have that gets fans involved is the Moran's Mafia. So it's a Patreon account. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's more or less a monthly subscription service for creators or po a lot of podcast people use it to support their shows. I've kind of put a twist on it and allowed fans to be able to support my program on a monthly monthly scale. So whether it's $5 a month is the lowest tier, you know, 
uh, to 65 to 100 to 200 dollars a month gets your name on the race bike so we actually have names on each fork tube and all the way down the front fender that at certain tiers like say you're even coming to one race you want to jump on the patreon for one month uh, you join in you can come to that race and boom your name's going to be on the bike so that's kind of a cool little program. Obviously, we do a lot of stuff with the sponsorship stuff too. So it's you know selling certain logos on the bike in certain locations. Uh, we do have a per round sponsorship or their helmet wrap. Which let me grab that real quick. Bingo. So which is our helmet wrap that we do every single weekend. So this one's the RC Racer Works. So it's just a cool little company that wants to jump on board. We do an ad for them, get them involved in the vlog, and obviously post on Instagram and stuff like that too. So we do. This every single round for a different company on top of some bike branding. So a logo on the bike for one round as well. That helps us pay for like hotels, flights, all that situation. But uh, yeah, this one's a pretty cool one this weekend because obviously it's RC cars too, but they actually have a, they actually have a, a map behind us that they want me to start advertising to try to branch or to try to bridge the market between RC cars and, am I going too long? No, you're good. Okay. Sorry, try to bridge the gap between RC cars and building stuff on tables to motocross and having stuff to put bolts and tools on and whatnot. So, okay, so that's how you can get involved, Kevin. I talked to Logan a little bit and mm -hmm. how you guys are, you're completely different people. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's unique, but you're doing the same kind of thing, I feel like. Yes. Like you're promoting your brand. Yes. You're pro promoting other companies that are helping you. Yeah. I asked other guys, what is making it to you? And for me, making it is be able to make a little bit of money, mm -hmm. buying the things that you need for life reasons, mm -hmm. and getting to ride your dirt bike. Where yeah. are we at on that spectrum? Oh, I think that's, I mean, that's 100% making it. Now, I've, I have a little bit further goals beyond that, but that is, I would say, a minimum for me. As long as I, because obviously I love this. I love the business side of this just as much as I do the racing side. So I do all the creative stuff, and that's why I continue to grind with it is because I actually truly enjoy it. But yeah, as long as you can make money, you're having fun on the dirt bike, and yeah, like that's honestly it's kind of a creative way that I do it is a lot of my helmet wraps, I try to do product swaps yep. instead of just cash. Like obviously cash helps, but I'll get a product swap and for X amount at their cost, so then I'm getting a asset for cheaper more or less, and I try to get all stuff that I want for when I'm done racing and when I'm you know moving on. So like- uh, How much more do you want to race? How, how longer? I put, I mean, I think a lot of these guys, I'm ready for the top 10 to retire, dude, to be really <laughs> honest. Uh, I, I kind of have 30 in mind, so I'm yeah. 23 right now. I got seven more years, solid. Is, it obviously depends on how healthy I can be, but I have a lot of interest in real estate and flipping houses and stuff like that, kind of like Chris, my mechanic. So if I'm, depending on where I'm at at 30, if I'm peaking like all these guys seem to be, I'll keep racing, but I would maybe like to move on and do something different by 30. All right, let's talk about your bike. Yep. Uh, we're on the old style chassis here, KTM chassis. Yep. Uh, for me, I think that's a smart move for a privateer, a little bit less uh, rigidity. I feel like there's more comfort. Um, and I feel like there's more parts available. It's a little bit more established. So how deep do you go into your engines? Is it a stock motor with just some add-on parts? Where are we at with that? So KTM's whole brand is uh, ready to race, right? I am spitting image of that. This is a stock 450, absolutely nothing touched inside of the engine. Uh, it has an FMF pipe, recluse clutch, and a vortex ignition. That is absolutely it. And to me, that says something right there. Like, I've ridden with a, a stock KTM, a vortex, an FMF muffler before, and just some fuel, and it's amazing how well these things can work. So yeah. smooth, linear power. Uh, for me, I kind of like that. Do you feel like you need more bottom end out there? You could always use a little bit more, especially with some of those three ends, some of those bigger rhythms. Yes, you could have more, but at the same time, a 450 and Supercross, like I hear, I don't know how true it is, but I hear a lot of guys detune their bikes after they get engines built and stuff like that. So that's one reason, one main reason why I'm on the 450 full time is because you could be pretty competitive on a stock motorcycle. For all you vet guys out there that want to put all this bling on your, on your motorcycle, you don't need all of it. It looks cool. It's great, but you don't need it. You got a professional number 80. That's right. You can be number 80 and just have a stock bike and go racing and be competitive. Uh, you can go visit KevinMorans.com. Go check out what he's doing. And uh, hey, like I said, come in the backside of the pits. A lot of cool guys out here you can talk to. Let's wrap up our privateer Friday paddock walk. We're probably one of the best looking privateers out there. I mean, we know he has the best abs, right? <laughs> he took off a couple chains for me. I respect that. <laughs> but uh, he's my buddy, 129, Lane Shaw, hailing from Texas. Uh, you've been doing this a minute. Yeah, six year, six consecutive full year. Uh, first time on a 450, 
and first time on the West Coast. So I come into A1, just walk into the stadium, and practice is going off, and I see some guy just boner airing this triple and up in the sky, right? And I'm like, oh, boy. And I look over, and he lands in the berm. He's got that head slap on the bar. I'm like, oh, that's Lane just sending it that first lap. But he OJ'd the crap out of it. So how's this 450 power? This 454 stroke, uh, she she eats. And uh, I wasn't really too ready for that triple off off the first lap. I should have probably <laughs> – I tell my kids when I teach them, like, to do a side lap, but I decided not to, and I decided to jump into the berm. So Do as I say, not as I do. 100%. 100% on that one. All right, so how long have you been doing this? Obviously, you've been a privateer for quite some time, but you have some key people helping you. Um, before we get to that, um, how long do you want to keep doing this? And for me, we always talk about with these privateers, like for me, making it is being able to make some money, right? Yep. And get to ride your dirt bike every day and something that you enjoy doing. So what does that mean to you getting to go race something like AMA Supercross, the pinnacle of our sport? It means more this year than it ever has. Um, turning 26, dad... My dad does. Mom and dad do a lot for me in the family, um, but I went out on my own this year. I bought the bike. My dad, dad got it. He helps me with the payments. I got all the parts. I got all the sponsors to get here. I'm in the van. Um, it means a lot more this year because it's all on me. I made my own program. Uh, it's a lot different than it's been in years past, but I'm enjoying it more now than ever. So why do you choose uh, the gas gas model? I guess is it something that you you have to do through your dealership? Is there something that you just like the bike or why you choose the, the red steel frame? So uh, TJ cycles out of Austin, Texas, Brian and uh, everyone over there helped me out a lot. But the KTM going to the new generation, I had all KTM stuff. Everything fit on the gas gas. It's red. I like red a little bit more. So we took a sidestep instead of figuring out where we kind of wanted to go with different bikes for next year. And you know, are we going to be doing 250 East or are we going to stay on the 450 or what are we doing? I have a 250. It's not built. It's just sitting at the in the garage at home in Texas, but I want to stay 450. So we are racing 250 East next week. I'll, I will be on a 450. Okay. I will be on this fire breathing dragon right here. Okay, so, so we need to make a decision here. No, I have one. Uh, I haven't made. It would be a last last second decision, but I want to stay 450. I'm starting. I feel like getting the flow, getting the bike kind of where I want to. It's a lot different. I've learned more in two weekends racing than I did all. I feel like the last six years racing 250. Um, so I'm kind of enjoying the process a little bit differently this year than years past. So you're making the drive yourself, you're doing all that, you're not getting flown, you know. Nothing. We know you got the necklace, but you're still yeah. pounding the pavement, right? <laughs> yeah, my, my grandparents uh, helped me with the necklace, but everything's on my own. Uh, I've had some great company, uh, people coming in and helping me on the weekends, but this is all me. Uh, and I like it. Uh, other than Boner Air and the Triple, I feel like it's been <laughs> it's been pretty great, and I'm loving every second of it, to be quite honest. So Lane's one of the most friendliest guys here. I mean, I, I've talked to him. Uh, I mean, that's how I met you. You're, we just started talking. and, came up to you and to, I came up to him and said hi because uh, they mentioned my name on Pulp. Yeah. And then you let me do a 250 shootout. Yeah. Ended up being best friends after that. Yeah. And BFFs. Yeah. And we've you've let me. You've actually opened the door to help my career so, so much. I'm very thankful for you. Well, there's a lot of good people back here, and we talk about you guys need to venture in the back pits a little bit. Sure, all the cool no, guys. I'm in the front. I'm in the front. The exit's right here, oh, so I'm in the front. It's the back front. No, I don't care what front. Okay. <laughs> if you guys want to go see some really down-to-earth people and, and the, the core of our sport and the backbone of our sport, come back here, talk to them. Uh, Len will take off his shirt, and there's a lot of app. See that right there? It's, I don't have that anymore. Ask I'm too old. Shall receive. There's a lot going on back here. <laughs> It's a lot we, do a lot, we do a lot of stuff for sponsorships around here, too, guys. Yeah. Don't forget. Yeah, there's a lot of things. So uh, don't forget to come back to Privateer Pits. Really fun time. Lane Shaw, who do you want to thank? Who who gets you here besides mom and dad? I love moms, by the way. Moms yeah. is awesome. She's, she's next level. Yeah. If, if you want to come back to the back pits and to see somebody, you probably want to see my mom more than you want to see me because she's way cooler than I am. She is way cooler than you are. She, it's a hard. It's going to be hard to fill her shoes one day, dude. It's so She's awesome. Who gets you here, brother? Man, Easy Line, uh, pipe support company, really helped up, uh, stepped up this year to help me get here. My mom and dad, I had, um, shoot, Ronnie Prado, and <laughs> trying to think, I did a lot of it my own, uh, making, doing some pro-ams and racing and training kids. Um, Fastlane Training is the brand I kind of made with Kyle Swanson. Um, shoot, that's pretty, TJ Cycles, they helped me get here. Everyone on the bike, uh, Double Tough Tarps. I'm trying to think of the people. What's that cool is like a lot of mom and pop shops, right? Yeah, it's a lot more of like 
down to earth people, kind of like Easy Lines from my hometown, big company out of my my hometown, and all, everyone else is like part of the bikes, but every, like financially, not too too many people, mom and dad, and working for it. That's right, mom and dad. Don't forget when you guys are up on the podium. I don't care how old you are, mom and dad got you here, right? So I'm gonna tell that to my kid too. Your kid, uh, he's. Well, that's not what I'm gonna talk about, my kid. <laughs> Lane Shaw, 129.